Thank you for welcoming me onto your screens or onto your headphones. Depending on you watching this, I'm Eddie, and this is the rollback, folks. I'm here to talk to you today about Disenchanted, aka it's not as good as the first one. And I saw the first one after I saw this one, and I initially liked this one. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So the synopsis. So I think what ten years, years after the happily ever after, Giselle and Robert move to a small town to raise their family. Um, but Giselle just kind of does you know kind of miss or or uh yearn for the simpler times of life you know magical unicorns and all that a magical kingdom a prince that she can just you know marry before getting to i'm getting okay again I'm, that's a little mean but she does yearn for a simpler life so she makes a wish and arendale and this weird place called andalasia no andalasia and arendale andalasia and the real world go off balance where the hell is Andalasia? Is that frozen? Huh. Anyway, so the pros of this one. Um, props to them that you managed to get the original cast back. I'll give them that. Uh, Amy Adams, an Oscar-nominated actress, mind you, is a Disney princess who sings. I did not know this. I initially cracked jokes. I apologize. Um, but... I actually kind of liked some of the ideas that this film had. The idea of the princess becoming the wicked stepmom. I actually really enjoyed that. The idea of there being two evil queens that will clash. Again, great fucking idea. I actually like all of that. The concept of, of you know, the 12th chime will end the curse or make the curse permanent. And Robert and the love interest of his stepdaughter, I want to say Marlo? Ma Morgan, I'm sorry. Um... You know, them stopping the, the 12th chime by holding back the clock. I like all those concepts. Those are actually great and brilliant ideas. I love that. Now, where we fall is the goddamn execution. So, before watching the initial one, I thought Disenchanted was fine. You know, the, the musical numbers were okay. The comedy hit some moments. You know, I, I had a middling feel to it. After watching the initial Enchanted, damn. It falls short, and that is not, like, scraping the surface. The initial Enchanted had a, a spectacle to it, a grandeur to it. It was an epic scale. Uh, the musical numbers were huge, with with dozens upon dozens, if not possibly a hundred extras, in a single shot. There was spectacle, there was moment, and also the music, quite frankly, slapped. It was good. It was much better than this one. The initial one at least had a few serious numbers that you could hold on to. Whereas this, it kind of felt more like an adaptation of, of a Broadway play where they had to scale everything down. Granted, there's like one big musical number in this one, but it pales in comparison to the scale of the initial. Uh, plus, the initial actually did explore some interesting tropes. You know, the whole idea of you're going to marry someone without ever going on a date with them. You know, that's a meme now, but they were asking that question back in, I think, what, 2008 when the initial one came out. Like, they questioned it. They were the initiators of the whole, really, you're going to do that, princess, idea that would get famous and frozen that now all the memes cover. You know, the joke about how Belle had Stockholm Syndrome when dealing with the Beast, or... Um, or, you know, the fact that, oh, you kissed her while she was asleep, you weirdo. All those memes, jokes, and observations initially started, and I can't believe I'm saying this, with Enchanted, at least as far as I'm aware of. Now, they took this film that held all these brown great, brown, groundbreaking concepts that Disney itself established, flipped them on their head, along with a great musical with, with, with spectacle and epicness, where the final where the final part of the film is an invert where the princess saves the prince from a dragon on top of a tall castle. That's epic. That's awesome. To go from that to this where the power of love wins. Mm. No. I'm sorry. Uh, Disenchanted feels like, so there was an era of Disney back in the early, late 90s, early 2000s, where Disney would just pump out sequels to their successful films for a quick crack, cash grab, right? The Lion King 2 comes to mind. Toy Story 2 was supposed to fall prey to that. Uh, there was even Cinderella 2, believe it or not. Like, oh, and The Little Mermaid 2. Again, it, these were all just cash grabs to try and, and cash in while doing minimum effort with okay animation. 
it feels like Disney's going back to that. Hocus Pocus was great, actually, but if Disenchanted is evidence of what's going to come, I would worry if I were you. Um, I haven't seen Pinocchio, but again, that felt like a cash grab to try and make some more money. Let's see what comes of all this. Uh, that said, Disenchanted... C minus. Is it watchable? Sure, but it's a bitter disappointment, a bitter pill to swallow. I don't recommend it. And the thing is, all these actors and actresses, you can tell they busted their ass in the first one, but this second run, they weren't given a lot to work with. It would it's kind of disappointing actually. Um maybe if this was gonna be given a theatrical release, maybe they would have given them a bigger budget to work with. Again, more spectacle, because that's what the initial one demanded. That said, though, uh, I am sorry if you were wanting to watch this film and this film, this review kind of stopped you from watching it. My apologies. Uh, that said, that's going to end it for this episode of The Rollback. Please like and subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it. We're trying to grow this channel. And tell me, what was your favorite part of the initial uh, Enchanted? You know, go and leave that comment down below. Uh, oh, you can also check out our podcast via the link down below as well. That said, I've been Eddie, and this was The Rollback. We'll see everybody.